When setting up a transparent wash, I usually start with a mixture of burnt shanna and yellow ochre. The ochre ensures that the red character of the burnt shanna is softened a bit. I use a fair amount of medium, in my case liquid light gel, so the drawing will still be visible. When the brown layer is ready, I take out my rag and partially remove the paint to anticipate the light-dark difference in the final painting. With my stippler, I spread the paint to remove the brush strokes. It's not an absolute necessity, but I prefer a more smooth surface to paint on. For me, there are a few reasons to paint over a transparent wash. The first one is that I can apply the highlights in the still wet Shanna with my rag. I set up the drawing in fairly heavy lines, so they will keep shining through the brown paint and that gives me something to hold on to when applying the highlights. It's a technique that doesn't allow you to do any details and that's a good thing at this stage. The second, and maybe the most important reason for me, is the unifying effect of a brown surface. Every color that you will paint on top of it will immediately blend in with the rest. Last but not least, a brown underpainting can make a major contribution to the atmosphere of your painting. It can be of great use especially when painting evening scenes with a warm overall tone. If you want to take full advantage of the possibilities of a brown substrate, you have to make sure that your top layers remain transparent, at least in some areas, causing the brown of the underpainting to remain visible. I use my stippler to create a very fine texture through which you can keep seeing the warm brown bottom layer. In some places, I even leave it completely open and that can yield surprising results. Not so long ago it wasn't customary at all to paint on a white substrate. It was not until around 1860 that the pre-Raphaelites began to cover their canvases with a white bottom layer. This partly explains the radiant colors in their work. In the centuries before that, the canvas was prepared with bone glue and then primed with a color usually brown. Some painters, such as 17th century Dutch landscape painter Jan van Gooyen, did not even bother. In his work, you can still see the brown color of the canvas and if you zoom in, you can even see the texture of the linen. I have often used a brown underpainting in my work, especially when painting dune landscapes. The result is a beautiful contrast between the green top layers and the warm brown underpainting. Actually, I could stop the video right here. As far as I'm concerned, I cover the most important matters concerning painting on a brown substrate. But if you want to find out how this specific painting turned out, please keep watching.
As with painting clouds, the reflections edges are critical. Hard edges are fatal for a realistic reflection. That is why I let the edge of the reflection blend into the still wet paint of the sky. I've done a lot of work so far, but to be honest, the results are still far removed from what I have in mind. Sometimes it's hard to keep faith in a happy ending, and most of the time I just muddle through until I start thinking, maybe this could still work out. I'm drawing the details of the water in the still wet paint of the top layer. I use the handle of a worn out brush stuck inside my rag. Now we're getting somewhere. I'm using the dry brush technique here. No medium, just paint, in this case yellow deep brilliant. I'm hardly touching the underlying texture with my fan brush, allowing only the protruding dots to pick up the paint and reveal the reflection of the cloud in the ripples. It's always a bit of a problem, at least for me, to determine the right moment to start painting these kinds of details. I often tend to be too early, mainly because it's so much fun and when it's done right it can make such a big difference. And hey, if it's too early, you can do it again later on and have fun twice. <laughs> 